thousand dollars in two fights for That's making nice. people tap. Kenny Florian was a bad motherfucker, man. Wow, thanks. I'm gonna tell you that. I'm going to tell you what, because that's, that's the kind of people that, you know what I'm saying? I, you and your tap-up boy, that's good. Kenny Florian was a bad motherfucker. Okay? Kenny Florian I mean, just is. cut George off. He and is. Just and he called out BJ Penn. Yeah. And he, in the top, when we did the interview with him, well, when Hackman did the interview with him, he picked Anne Jemima to fuck Betty Crocker up. That was the coolest shit I ever seen, man. Because you know what? Anne Jemima, that's a big black mama, man. She would fuck up Betty Crocker's little white ass. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, Ken Flo looked good in this fight. Um, I think he's on, on the path to fight BJ Penn, but I think that all depends on what happens with this BJ Penn GSP fight that's right. coming up. Because let's face it, if Penn loses, he can still go back down a weight class and fight right. Kenny Florian and still get paid. That's true. That's true. But the big eventful fight, obviously, everybody's waiting for Couture to see Lesnar, man. And wow, you know what? We called it from the beginning. At, well, at the end of round one, who'd you have winning? I had Lesnar winning. At the end of round one. I did. See, as much as I, I think Couture... I don't want to say dominated, but I think he did more in the first round than Lesnar. You know what surprised me? I thought that you would see. They both trained for two things. Of course, Couture was going to train to be able to handle the ground with uh, Lesnar. Lesnar probably had to train to be able to do good stand-up. Stand -up. Well, during the course of this match, you, I saw Lesnar looking better at stand-up and Couture controlling big-ass Lesnar. But I just figured that that would tire him out after a while, man, because that is a big motherfucker. Brock Lesnar was 285 the day of that fight. That's, I mean, people don't realize how much he's sucking weight to get to 265. He's probably, he's over 300 pounds in the offseason. You know, that's a big He boy. made Couture look small. And, and for all you Couture fans, and I understand what it's like to be a fan, to have undying passion for something or someone, and, but you now have to literally take a step back and realize just what Brock Lesnar is. Yeah. He is a freak of nature. He is a true athlete. Right. I'm not saying that the other guys aren't, but this guy is just... He's, he's amazing. To he's a that machine, thing. too, man. Yeah. The biggest thing is, is that guy isolates himself up in fucking Minnesota with snowmen in cold-ass weather in the See, fucking Minnesota. The Vikings. best part is when he started jerking off Randy Couture's face. Because <laughs> he was kind of like on top of him. Like the, uh, right. And it did. From the back side, Dude, it looked it like, looked he, was like he was masturbating. Trying, yeah, it looked like he was trying to fucking... And my buddy him. Jimmy's like, man, that knocked him down. And then when you see the replay, when Couture goes like this, and the and whole side of his head... back is exposed. Oh, my God, and his hand probably has to be about that big. Right. But you know what, man? The good, the good way to look at it is like this. He, when you look at these strikers that are long and lengthy and they're thin and their hands are snapping back so fast, it looks like they're generating all this power. You look at Lesnar, who's so thickly muscled, it's almost like George Foreman. He would just, ooh. And he would hit, like when he hit Michael Moore, Michael Moore was like, I've never been hit that fucking hard in my fucking life. And it didn't look like he even hit him. You know what I'm saying? But you don't realize how much fucking power these guys have. That's Randy doing. Couture. Yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you what, after he got up and that whole left side of his face already started the walk, I'm just, right. I mean, the, the, I think, honestly, the sky's the limit Can for Brock Lesnar. Can he be Fedor? No. Can Lesnar be Fedor? No. He can't be Fedor. No, Fedor's a bad motherfucker. I don't care because you people out there, it, you can't even argue with that. Fedor has fought guys who have outweighed him, who are a foot taller than him. Right. If Fedor doesn't care, Fedor is backstage before fighting Tim Sylvia playing peanut with taking shots of vodka. And he, fucked him up in 36 seconds. That's a bad motherfucker. I mean, George. he can fight and he can strike. Now, I'm going to give George credit what credit's due. I always said, and Anderson Silva's my favorite fighter, you know what I'm saying? I, but you know what? I'd have to say, and we're going to ask everybody out there, who is the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in MMA right now? I'd have to probably say Fedor because Fedor does fight a lot of guys that are way above his weight. Anderson Silva, if he jumps up to 205, he's making a basically, what, 10, 15-pound jump? Fedor has to fight a motherfucker somewhere. He fought that big Asian guy that was 400 pounds, yeah, man. Cause, cause over who does that? People who want to get paid. Because over in Pride, there was no late weight limit. And, like, I don't know if you folks understand. In the UFC, there's a heavyweight class, but it's not really because you have to weigh 265 and under. Right. Which, to me, take the cap off. Yeah. I would rather see Brock Lesnar not have to suck the weight. Yeah. And then, then have a heavyweight and then, I guess, have a super heavyweight class or something. I, I, don't, I don't know. Who's the best pound for pound fighter? Okay, man, you, we got the we got the lineup, man. I'm, you could say Fedor, right? You could say Anderson Silva, and then here's the and here's the argument with Anderson Silva that could go at one eighty five or at two hundred five. Yeah, because in my opinion, at two hundred five, the champ is not that dominant. Like, there there is no. I like Anderson Silva, but Anderson Silva, I think when he fights at two hundred five, he is the he is a bad motherfucker, man. But I mean, he has to start watching power at two hundred five. Like he's got he's got he can't. I don't think he can be as aggressive. You saw that with Patrick Cote. Yeah, he would have beat Patrick Cote and stuff. But it, it wasn't happening as fast because when you're fighting those heavy guys, you got to respect their power. You know, one punch can fucking fly you out. 
You know, you got GSP, you got BJ Dayton, you got Uriah Faber. Yes, we know Faber just took a loss, but you still have to look at his body of work, and it's strong. And the one person y'all need to keep an eye on is a bantamweight. Yes, bantamweight. That's 135 pounds. Miguel Torres. is nasty. He's going to be fighting on WEC. He just got the belt uh, at WEC, but uh, he's just, that kid's phenomenal. Yeah, tell us who you think the best pound-for-pound fight, but just don't make the comment. Just tell us why. You know, I mean, I don't if there's somebody substance. that we haven't, you know what I'm saying? If there's somebody that we've left out that you feel that should be the best pound-for-pound fighter, let us know, man. Put it in the comments section. Um, that's what I'm